Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and today's unboxing is going to be on ornithine arginine. So I did do a previous video on arginine by itself. I actually stopped by Whole Foods, picked up Whole Foods brand. On that video, I'll put it down below. I did it mostly for just figuring out how arginine kind of helped with blood pressure, modestly, but still it helped. But Now Foods was one of the few that were approved by Consumer Labs. And this one is going to be on arginine ornithine because I do have a patient uh, a little bit high blood pressure, a little hypertensive, and he's actually gotten off his medicines at this point. What we're trying to do now is keep him off his medicines and build muscle. So for those of you who follow me, thank you. I appreciate it. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Rick Segill. I'm an integrative medicine doctor in Hoffman Estates. Also train people in lifestyle change at the Endorphin Effect Training Center in Bartlett. I do most of my consults via the internet when it comes to coming up with a lifestyle program. When it comes to applying it, I see my clients at the Endorphin Effect Training Center because of the vaccines that are coming out and summer sun that's starting to change as far as weather. People are coming out more often and I am starting to see people in the clinic again. So keep fingers crossed that everybody stays safe. But for the purposes of our talk today, I wanted to show you, this, this is a schematic I pulled out of one of the NIH articles, how arginine is important, has an amino acid for many different things in the body, specifically nitric oxide. So in my previous video, I have to apologize. I kept on referring it to nitrous oxide. That's the car guy in me. Because uh, in cars, you use nitrous oxide to cool down the engine and get a little bit more horsepower, compress the density of the air-gas mixture. Nitric oxide is what we have in our blood vessels. Nitric ice oxide. Now, it is also surmised that when you don't have that much either building block of arginine or your lining has been denuded, irritated, damaged, then you don't have nitric oxide. And if you don't have that, the blood vessel clamps down, the macrophages attack, and the platelets clump. And I'll explain this in a second. This is a summary of the Nobel laureates that were awarded uh, the Nobel Peace Prize in 1998 for the discovery of nitric oxide. Ignaro, you can probably find him on YouTube. And he's older, he's kind of funny. But And he also did saw a short stint with Herbalife, so nothing against Herbalife, but <clears throat> that, that sometimes uh, puts a little bit of bias into it. But he joined after he discovered this with the uh, two other scientists. What they discovered was the properties of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a gas. That's why it's really hard to measure because it's gone within seconds out of the bloodstream until you form more. And hopefully your cells, the endothelium, can form a lot. But again, if you don't have enough arginine or if you have damaged endothelial lining or if you have a ton of inflammation, you'll rob yourself of nitric oxide. This is how it works. So this is a blood vessel, arterial. You don't really have this in the veins, but the lining of the blood vessel, the inner lining, inner coating, is called the endothelial liner. It's one cell thick but all joined together that produce nitric oxide. The only problem is that when you have a high inflammatory state, a lot of reactive oxygen species, you bind the nitric oxide and you essentially use it all up. But if you have a lot of inflammation, a lot of reactive oxygen species, if you smoke, you won't be able to make it up and eventually the lining will be destroyed. Now, if you fillet your arteries and your arterioles and all your blood vessels open and flatten them up, you'll almost have half to a full football field of blood vessel. Now, if you have a good, healthy life, then that lining will take care of itself. If you don't, and you introduce one inflammatory trauma after another, the lining will essentially not be able to keep up with the inflammation that you're causing it. You would think smoking, fine. Alcohol, fine. Eating processed food, fine. Uh, those are all inflammatory causes. But what you won't think about is stress, anguish, anger, all that stuff that we have on Monday morning when you get to work. All those things cause heart attacks. If you didn't know it, across the world, the day and the time period for the highest amount of heart attacks is Monday morning, rush hour, no matter where you are in the world. And that has something to do with the stress and the work week. So it also has something to do with the lack of any calming practice. But the uh, bottom line is that this lining is supposed to be able to keep you up with nitric oxide and protect you for life. So try to reverse all that crappy stuff that I suggested in addition to the calming practice that will soothe you on a Monday morning. And hopefully this thing will work for you properly. 
by not giving you high blood pressure, by not making your platelets sticky, and by not attacking everything in sight if you're a white blood cell. Let me explain. So as I mentioned, arginine is important as a substrate to develop nitric oxide by those capillary blood vessels, the endothelium. If you're lacking arginine, then the blood vessels aren't going to have any building blocks, so they'll be making crappy or minimal amounts of nitric oxide, thus high blood pressure. The easy thing to do if you are low in arginine is just take some extra. And like in the previous video, 500 milligrams twice a day, I think is decent enough. It has to be L-arginine. The problem is there's no great test for arginine. Some of the boutique practices will have fancy blood tests that are not covered by insurance. They go out to Genoa or DDI or Labrix, and you might be able to get a protein analysis or an amino acid analysis, but it'll be uh, expensive. I'd say the easiest thing to do because there's no side effects is just take the arginine, don't do anything else different, see what happens after a month at 500 twice a day and see if your blood pressure drops, bingo, uh, you're low. These are small studies that support arginine. This one's nice because it gives you a mechanistic way of how arginine works. This is the nice study using a sustained release form of arginine, but they don't make this anymore. But either way, they found that when you use sustained release, it had a better effect as far as lowering your blood pressure than taking smaller doses. As I mentioned before, the lining or endothelium will make the nitric oxide if given the basic building blocks like L-arginine. But the platelets and the macrophages, macrophages are white blood cells that go on the hunt and uh, say look for LDL particles, the cholesterol particles, and cause plaque formation. Well, we can also settle the irritation and have the macrophage and platelet work more efficiently. Platelets are these tiny components in the bloodstream that are non-nucleated, and so they go around looking for a fight. When they start to sense that there's irritation or inflammation around, they'll become sticky and they'll clump together to form a block. For example, if I were to cut my hand, you'd see platelets forming microscopically in the cut and eventually your bleeding would stop because of platelet plugs. That, now that's a good thing, but the problem would be if you have irritation in the blood vessel, like a coronary artery that has a little bit too much cholesterol or has been exposed to smoke or saturated fat, you can also have platelet plugs form there and actually block the heart, giving you a heart attack. So obviously don't smoke, try to cut back and watch your saturated fats. So for those of you who watched my leaky gut video, these are enterocytes. This is a lumen or a piece of the small intestine. And you have enterocytes, you have this little orange brush border, finger-like projections. Then you have this biofilm of slime where your probiotic that you take sits and lives. If you don't have any biofilm, then you don't have any place for your probiotic. Essentially, you're wasting money. So that's why it's important to have some form of fiber. So you guys that do carnivore, you're missing out on some of that slime that you need. Slime can be in the form of psyllium husk, a uh, combination of soluble and insoluble fiber, or acacia, I've done videos on that. Or if you wanna go shortcut, uh, slippery elm, marshmallow root, sometimes even DGL, chewable, will help with making the slime. But bottom line is that this process of a filter of sorts for your small intestine to keep the crap out and make poop, but get the fuel in and feed the body, it depends on these layers of lining of live tissue. Not only the biofilm that you have, but also the finger-like projections, these little things called zonula, these fibers that keep the leaky gut from happening. And when you break open these zonula green slashes here, then the cells come apart and it allows everything to come in. That's why people with leaky gut or no zonulin, where they let everything else in because either they don't have biofilm or you lost the zonulin bridge, they'll respond to even vitamins or Tylenol or Benadryl in the opposite way. Some of my fibromyalgia sufferers will say, I don't wanna take any medicines because I have super sensitive. And I have one guy who takes magnesium and right after, 30 minutes after magnesium, he gets really sleepy. That's unusual, especially for like magnesium citrate. For magnesium L-threonate or aspartate, maybe because they get into the blood brain barrier faster, but crappy citrate, uh, that's a leaky gut. And I propose to you that if you understand this concept of a leaky gut where things get in the filter or get past the filter a little bit too easily, then we can go into leaky brain, leaky blood vessel, especially if you have edema. So this is almost the same thing as that. This is just the blood vessel. These are the single cells that make up the lining of the blood vessels called the endothelium. And each cell also has a connecting xylem fiber. So when the xylem fiber, just like in the gut, when the xylem fiber is gone, 
then you lose the filtration system and you let everything in the blood vessels into the interstitium and you can have really easy edema. I have a lot of patients with edema. I have one patient with lip edema, but I believe that the problem there is that the barrier has been broken. Not only do they probably lack the zonulin, they probably also lack this blue part, which is called a glycocalyx. The glycocalyx essentially acts as the same thing as this biofilm, except in the biofilm of the small intestine, you house charges, you house probiotics. Here, the glycocalyx has its own responsibility. You don't have any bacteria in the blood vessels, but in the blood vessels, this acts like a, almost like the bottom of a lake where you have the slime and finger-like projections from the bottom. If you ever go barefooting in a lake, you'll step on the bottom, it's really slimy. Well, that slime helps with the lining of every artery. If you did not have the glycocalyx slime, then you'd have the pressure, which is 130, 140 millimeters of mercury, coming through the artery and just shearing the heck out of these single cells. And if the single cells get irritated, guess what they're not gonna produce? nitric oxide. If you don't have nitric oxide, they all clamp down. You have high blood pressure. The platelets get sticky. The macrophages or white blood cells, they go everywhere because there's no barrier and they start to attack everything. And that is the development of a heart attack, inflammation, edema, and probably the beginnings of cancer. You can see how when you get to the microscopic level that there are elements that are important to understand. I was watching a program this morning with a scientist. They were interviewing him, and he said one of the best things you can do is stop all your supplements. I'm thinking, what the heck is that guy saying? I, I mean, personally, I know a lot of naturopaths. I know a lot of nutritionists and non-MDs that do great by making the right suggestions. I think the problem comes if you're on your own and you're just reading an article or you're watching a YouTube channel and you see somebody come up with a new thing and you have the disease for that new thing, you'll probably want to invest in that. I had a very smart man come in with his wife and she had a lot of medical problems. Fibromyalgia, leaky gut, uh, high blood pressure, disease of the arteries, but he had her on a list. I mean, she was taking probably a handful every couple hours and that becomes a little bit of a problem. I'd say that's a bit much. I would like to condense all that into something that's not really three times a day. I think twice a day is fair. Three times a day, that's getting to a sustainability issue. Every three hours, no way. Unless you have massive disease, then I think you'll be inspired to take that because you're beating your disease. But if you don't know what you're doing, you should get some help. And all I do is I get some blood tests. Again, you don't have any arginine levels. You can have other blood tests that will serve as proxy to define whether you would benefit from this or not. And if the risk to benefit ratio is like this, where you have multiple levels of benefit, but no risk, I think it's worth it. And this is where my warriors, my patients that are successful, they do great jobs because they can read. They might use me as the outsourced librarian to kind of go through and fine tune what kind of information they're getting. But that's okay, I don't mind serving that way. Ultimately, my job is to get my patients to the end where they're like 100 years old, independent, and no medical disease. So now the question is, do I stick with my L-arginine 500 milligrams twice a day, or do I go for the arginine ornithine? Now this has a combination of two different amino acids. The one arginine I just talked about, but it's in free form and it's a thousand milligrams per two capsules. So there's much more in here in addition to ornithine. Ornithine is an interesting amino acid. It is actually made by arginine as well. So, so arginine can be converted to nitric oxide. It can also be converted into ornithine. This was a small study, but it was cool, where they compared ornithine and caffeine with just caffeine alone. They found the people that used the caffeine and added ornithine on a regular basis actually had an improvement in their mood. And you would think that caffeine alone would, if anything, increase anxiety or jitteriness. The concept of the study was maybe the ornithine modulated how people responded to caffeine. So they'd have an improvement in wakefulness and mood, but they wouldn't have the jitteriness. And here's the big money shot. So for my guy who's trying to get bigger in a short amount of time, I mean, we already took care of high blood pressure. I should say he took care of high blood pressure. I just guided him a little bit further to fine tune. Now we're gonna to try to get massive with regards to muscle before we turn 60. And it goes back to the question, should we stick with arginine or to go with arginine and ornithine? And, and here's the money shot. So do we stick with arginine or do we go with arginine and ornithine? No. So now Sportsline has arginine at a thousand in free form, but it also has ornithine. Although it was a very small study, the outcome was the ornithine arginine group actually had a triggering of insulin-like growth factor and growth hormone versus the placebo group. 
Unfortunately, there's no mechanism of action study. It's just a small declaration. And, but I still think it's worth the investigation. And that in the bodybuilding world, there are people who use arginine ornithine combinations to stimulate growth hormone, especially before workout. My hypothesis is maybe because arginine is around and it does help with nitric oxide. Nitric oxide dilates blood vessel, allows more oxygen to get into muscle. I think that's why they get a pump. I would submit to you that the increased blood flow to muscle especially causes the improvement in exercise. Finally, this is a super thick article, but it's worth it because again, it gives mechanism of action for you guys who like to be in the weeds. And here is a kind of cool picture showing what I tried to draw. This was a nice schematic, not necessarily to show arginine's effect, but more on how nitric oxide affects with relaxation versus contraction. Relaxation, like in blood vessels, like in getting more oxygen, like in erectile dysfunction. See the previous video I did if you wanna know about erectile dysfunction and arginine. One small caveat is if you're taking high doses of erectile dysfunction medicine like Cialis or Levitra, that works by increasing nitric oxide as well. And that was stumbled upon because the medicine was supposed to be high blood pressure and they found that people got erections. So they packaged it as an erection medicine. However, because those erection medicines cause increase in nitric oxide, L-arginine theoretically can cause an increase in nitric oxide. You will really dilate the blood vessels. Like when people come to the emergency room with hypertensive crisis or a blocked up artery, the usual go-to is to give them nitrates. And nitrates in the form of IV or nitrates under the tongue. And for the same reason, when you introduce nitrates, whether oral or IV, to somebody who isn't making enough nitric oxide, you'll open blood vessel up and hopefully save them from a heart attack. But in the case we're using Viagra Cialis and you're taking this in addition, you might really bottom out your blood pressure. So watch it. I don't think it's that strong, but it depends on how sensitive you are. So just word of caution, be careful. Take this information and bring it to your doctor. See if it's safe for you to use arginine or arginine and ornithine. For my middle-aged guys who are exercising, trying to build muscle mass, but also have hypertension, I'd probably move to the arginine ornithine instead of the arginine by itself. If you don't know what you're doing, if you're totally confused, you can reach me at my website and I give consults to any part of the world. I can help you figure out things based on what's available in your area and maybe what your blood test showed. Hopefully this gives you some ideas or some directions. If you have any other questions, put them down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching up until this point. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you at the next video.